All right, well, here it goes. Happy 2023, y'all. Welcome to the channel. Sarah here, and today I have a mm, tutorial, or it's actually, no, I'm sorry, it's not a tutorial. It's a soap fail of epic proportions. It's so bad that literally I thought about not posting this, but I do think that there is value in seeing the mistakes that other people make and you know, kind of um, seeing what it's really like. So I think that this is a fabulous example of what not to do when making cold process soap. I actually don't even have a bar to show you because it was that terrible. I ended up throwing the whole thing away. Let's just, let's just get into it and see where we went wrong. The idea or inspiration for this bar was a very getting ready for summer. We miss summer. The weather is very crappy here. Um, so that was the inspiration for this bar. Something coconut, something nice like that. Okay. So for this recipe, we, as always, dipped into some gloves and went to gather some materials. We grabbed our distilled water and lye and worked with that. Now, I have never really talked about lye on my channel before, uh, aside from to say that you should definitely watch someone's video who knows exactly what they're doing when working with lye because it can be harmful. And you will see me here pouring the water and then pouring the lye into a separate container. The third step there is combining both of them. You never want to pour um, water into lye. You need to pour your water and then pour your lye in on top of it, okay? We're setting that to the side so the temperature of that can come down. One of the major problems that I had with this bar was I soaked it at too high of a temperature, um, which is something that I'm working on. Usually I'll see like the lye has come down to 115 degrees and I'll start panicking that it's too late when in reality that's still too hot to soap at. So um, I would recommend soaping, or what I found the most success with has been soaping between 90 and 95 degrees. Some people will say that's too hot, some people will say that's too cold. It's really what works for you and that is the temperature that I have found works best for me. The other materials we're using for today's soap would be my trusty kitchen scale. I have this little tea strainer here that I'm going to use to sprinkle some gold mica. Um, I just came from Target. I have titanium dioxide pigment for the white layer of soap. I just kind of want to whiten it up a little bit. We're going to use cappuccino mica powder from Brambleberry and this coconut soleil fragrance oil from it. Candle Science is a really great fragrance supplier because they put all the information that you could possibly need on the actual fragrance label. So they have the safe usage percentages for soaps and candles, as well as the flashpoint. It's everything that you need right there on the bottle so you don't have to go kind of search for it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set up everything so once the soap comes down in temperature, we are ready to soap. Here you'll see me using a wooden skewer to pour the fragrance oil onto. I do not know where I got that idea, but let me tell you, if you ever have your fragrance oil um, pouring onto your hand or dripping down the front of the bottle when you're using it, try this. Put the wood skewer there at the edge of the bottle and let the fragrance oil pour down the wooden skewer. This is probably second nature to most of you, but I had no idea and was really struggling with it for quite a while. So I was super glad to find that tip. Now we're measuring out my secret weapon of the swirl quick mix. I'm making two different colors. That's why I'm using both pitchers. Once the lye comes down in temperature, go ahead and mix it slowly into your soap. I needed to, again, divide this into two pitchers for the two different colors. And here was my first mistake, okay? Let me say, I cannot recommend enough um, like blooming your mica powder in some oil. Just depending on your recipe, just take a little bit of that oil, a tablespoon is enough. Pour it into a little tiny container separate from your soaking containers and then add the mica then add your mica powder to it. You will very easily be able to blend them and you won't have any chunks in your soap. 
So you're going to bloom that mica powder so you don't get any spots in your soap bars or really that technique works with pretty much anything that you're making that is oil-based and then add that to your separated containers. So that was my first mistake. I went ahead and added the mica powder um, without blooming it and I really wish I hadn't done that. Now, more experience would have saved me from this awful disaster because I would have seen that they are clearly not combined. The lye oil has not, the lye and oil mix has not come together um, and it's just simply not mixed properly. So that was a mistake. There was my second mistake. The bottom, Though I will say the bottom layer did turn out um, pretty, pretty decent. So this layer, not so much, but the top layer, indeed, it was awful. Okay, so I poured my bottom layer here. Then went ahead with that little tea strainer and the gold mica to put a gold line in the middle, which I highly recommend um, doing this. Even if you're just using one color of soap, I think it just adds something a little bit nice, uh, kind of a little surprise to the middle of your bar. Just make sure that you cover the entire surface evenly before pouring the second half on. Here is my next mistake. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but you get the picture. Either way, the soap didn't turn out. So just make sure when you are mixing your high water solution and your oils that you are combining them really, really well before you um, before you pour them into the mold. Once you've poured it in, it's, it's kind of too late. I was super, super proud actually of this bar. Um, never occurred to me once that it might not turn out. So I did go ahead and add a little swirly design to the top. I thought that would be adorable. I covered it with my parchment and wrapped it in the paper towel to force it to go through gel phase. I always do that because I think that the colors look nicer when they go through the gel phase. Um, and you have to do that by keeping it kind of like evenly warm. So if you just sit it up on the counter, the bottom will turn out to be a little bit different. Just the bottom layer will um, stay the warmest the longest so that will that area of the soap bar will look a little bit different and let me tell you that concludes the two that concludes the non or the un tutorial what do they call it yeah the un tutorial please don't do any of those things that i did make sure that you're doing Overall, I think that my advice is really um, consider your entire process from beginning to end before starting to do something because had I really thought about it, I would have had, my bar would have turned out, you know, at all, right? It may not have been the best looking, but it at least would have turned out and I have something to show you right now, but unfortunately I don't. So the last thing I've recorded was me cutting this soap and I did put it on my YouTube shorts. So check it out and I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to stop there. You'll have to stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to see chapter two of this coconut soap saga where I try it for a second time. We'll just, we're just going to have to see. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, I'm gonna end it there. I'm going to insert here with some lovely music, the cut of this bar, and I will see you in the next video.